Hello everyone and welcome back guys to another F1 2018 video and I cannot thank you guys enough for the support over the video so far and once again I can only apologise to those of you that have heard this message many many times so far but I'm just going to quickly explain why I've managed to get some footage out of this game early. Now recently I was actually invited to uh, London for a PR event with Codemasters where I was able to get some footage from the brand new F1 2018 game. Post that footage and obviously try and share sort of different videos, different stuff with you guys on the channel. There has been lots of content gone up so far, so I will try to leave a link to the full playlist. If you click on that I at the top right at the top right hand side of your screen, so you will be able to see that playlist as well. But today's video, we're going to be taking a uh, uh, the Has car to Spa. We're going to be trying out some of the different ERS modes. So I'm going to see what happens. If I run the car on absolute maximum ERS, you know, see how long it lasts, see everything like that. I'm also going to try doing a little bit in cockpit cam as well over the course of this video. You know, something a little bit different. And obviously as well, I really just want to go to the Spa circuit. As well as actually this one, I think we do actually get foggy conditions as well. Which is obviously the new weather system that has come into this game as well. You know, just another sort of dynamic weather that has been brought into the F1 2018 game. So maybe, you know, you'll be racing and you think it's going to rain very, very soon. But it turns out it is just a fog. And obviously that can really, really shake the races up. Just a little bit more than it normally would as well here. But yeah, looking forward to this race. The first time I've actually been in the Haskar on this new F1 2018 game. I do actually have a few more videos. One in the Red Bull and then a couple of comparator laps in things like the Force India, the Ferrari and the Mercedes as well. So make sure you are subscribed for those really really does help me out obviously if you do click that like and subscribe on these videos so here we are then at spa well, as you can see picturesque as always special race here today we have some marvelous machines down on the grid that in just a few moments will be accelerating up to some really high speeds indeed to compete for a prestigious grand prix victory so here we are once again ready to go racing through the arden forest 4.35 miles of long straights, fast corners, and massive elevation changes. It makes this not only one of the most exciting circuits on the calendar, but one that makes for some consistently high quality racing as well. Simply put it, we're almost ready to go then, and this is what the starting... Okay, so here we are then on the grid, ready for the Belgian Grand Prix. Three laps here in the Haas Formula One car, and I'm gonna start off, I think, in normal sort of T cam mode, as you can see five laps here on the grid, and it's lights out, and away we go. Not a particularly brilliant start once again, there, as you can see, losing a couple of positions off the launch. Hulkenberg and Ericsson getting past me. They Williams, I think that was a Lance Stroll, sending an absolute mad one down the inside in towards T1, though, which is quite a surprise as well. But we're now going to try and move into cockpit cam there, accidentally forgetting to change up just a couple of times. So actually sticking on the T-Cam, you know, I, I don't fancy cockpit cam in the Halo for my first time going through Eau Rouge, I'm not going to lie there. As we come out on to the long back straight here, we're going to try and turn up this ERS deployment to hot that mode to just see, you know, what does happen with the car, you know, how it's going to be. Unfortunately, my driving in this video isn't probably the best in the world. There are certainly a few questionable moments on the whole. Yeah, as I said, you know, I'm still really trying to get used to the controller on this game. So unfortunately the gameplay isn't quite as good as hopefully it will be once I get a full copy of the game. And I'm able to, you know, to use it on my wheel as well as everything else. But through the well, middle sector at the moment, just getting past my teammate Kevin Magnuson there. And well, we've just about survived. But now we're going to try and switch. Uh, still actually running with the T-Cam, you know, just, just tricking myself just a couple of times. So and there we go, into the cockpit cam as last. You know, I accidentally clicked through it a couple of times originally and as you can see you know it's not actually too distracting on this game you know actually quite all right to drive with on the whole we're going to send a very very well it wasn't such a poor move but it was the fact that Nico Hulkenberg started to well, turn in on me even though I was already there and now we're going to try and get a run on Stoffel Van Dorn obviously one problem with rolling cockpit cam with a controller is obviously how twitchy the steering unfortunately looks as well. So I can only apologise about that, but you know, I really wanted to try and give you guys some cockpit cam gameplay of this game as well. So you know, I thought, you know, it was probably, you know, a fair compromise, you know, trying to get as much different content as I possibly can from this game. So hopefully, obviously, you know, you guys still do enjoy this video nonetheless. Finishing the end of lap one, then we're gonna have a look down the inside of Fernando Alonso down in towards T1, maybe Carlos Sainz as well. They're quite a nice little dive bomb by myself, if I do say so myself, and I'm up 
into P9 of this Grand Prix. And overall, therefore, it has actually been quite a good start. I think he started in P13 in this race. Going through a rouge that we lose in the back end ever so slightly in the back end. Really, you know, sort of, well, he, he bottoms out, actually. Obviously, you can come through a rouge there, which obviously means that you've got to be a lot more careful than you have been on the previous Formula 1 game. So, as we get to the top of the hill once more, they're trying to break nice and tidy there. As we come now down in towards Sector 2 here, Spa once again. I know I say this every single time I race here on every single game. It is just such an incredible circuit. They were almost running actually into the back of Esteban up on there as I'm getting, you know, sort of a little bit, you know, amazed by Spa once more here. You know, it looks absolutely fantastic in this game once again, as I said. But I'm actually going to the Belgian Grand Prix this year as well, so a little bit of a side point to this video. So obviously, you know, if, if anyone is actually going to the Belgian Grand Prix, uh, just, you know, just leave it down in the comments, you know, predictions maybe or anything like that as we try to send it right around the outside of Esteban Ocon and accidentally clicking the pause button halfway through that moment there. But yeah, I'm actually going to the Belgian Grand Prix, as I said, so really, really looking forward to that race as well. But we're now getting a very, very good run on the back of Sergio Perez as we come up the long, long back straight up in towards Blanche on there. It's almost going to be side by side though. We're just, just not going to be able to get on the inside there. He does actually back out a little bit late in the end there. So we do actually inherit P7 in this Grand Prix. So best of the rest at this current stage of the race here, which is absolutely fantastic for myself. Kimi Reichen and Lewis Hamilton both lighting up the timing screens. Will a purple lap, but we are able to do so as well. Maybe we need to up the AI. Just a little bit for my next video there. But yeah, really, really happy with that lap. Overall, you know, starting to find a little bit more consistency with the F1 2018 game. Honestly, I probably enjoy it just as much in cockpit cam as I did in sort of third person, uh, sorry, T cam even, obviously. Uh, with, you know, where you can't see the front wing anyway, but just the way the halo is positioned, I sort of feel that a lot of the time, you know, probably I'm best off just being in cockpit cam just as well as I am in third person cam there, so hopefully, you know, I'll, I'll do a bit more testing further down the line, see how I feel there, but just moving past Max Verstappen there, actually now up into P6 of this Grand Prix, doing very, very well on the whole. Overall, obviously only a three lap race, so the ERS deployment wasn't too crucial, you can see we are starting to run very, very low on it, the ERS as well there, so something, you know, that you, you, you obviously you just cannot run on at maximum throughout the entirety of a race. I did sort of touch upon it when I did my career mode video though there, but unfortunately, once again, claimed a victim by the curbs on this game there. Unfortunately, we're going to drop back a couple of places there. We were running really, really well in P6 there, so unfortunately, back down to P11 in this Grand Prix as we come through in towards the final sector, through Stavlo one final time, and hopefully, you know, we're able to get back up in to the points of this Grand Prix all over the back of Fernando Alonso there do not get the best of run out of the exit of Stavlo here up on well down uh, well I say down the long back straight it's not even a really obviously a straight as you move up towards a blanche one here are we going to be able to have a look down the inside into the bus stop chicane one final time to score points in this Belgian Grand Prix yes we are just able to there a horrific dive bomb on both Nando and Carlos Sainz there and lose the back end I think there was a little bit more contact with sights out of the final corner. Probably not my finest moment of driving there, but it's P9 at the end of the Belgian Grand Prix. Well, what a drive that was to take the win for Ferrari today. So, Ash, how exactly did they set themselves apart from the pack today? Well, I think the track conditions just really suited their car today. Wind, track temperature, you name it. These cars come alive when the tyres are just at the right temperature. So the more easily you can keep them there, the better your race tends to go. And that's exactly what happened. Their car just looks so comfortable out there. So here they come now, out onto the podium. Wherever you go, anywhere in the world, the prancing horse flags are dominant in the grandstands and they're out in force again today. It's Ferrari. Now then, Anthony Davidson, who was your driver of the day? Ah, uh, it's got to be Roman Grosjean. So there we are then. We still were able to get Anthony Davidson's driver of the day at the end of that video there. But hopefully, you know, you guys have enjoyed this video. As I said, plenty more F1 2018 content will be coming to the channel over the space of the next week. Probably week and a half on the whole. But thank you all so much for watching this video. As I said, do not forget to like, subscribe for more 
F1 2018 content, and I will see you guys next time for a brand new video.